All right, guys. Uh, welcome back. We are, in fact, doing the Valhalla once more. Continuing where we left off um, last night. Oh, man. That was a trip. I was so happy with the way that the, uh, the stream turned out last night, though. It was, uh, all, from an audio standpoint, it was exactly what I was hoping for. Um, so let's see if we can get that same feeling once more. Hmm. <clears throat> Your electricity bill will be sent out on the 24th, and I bought the shoulder massager. Oh, so it looks like Dorothy was here, but then I guess Jill kicked her out. I kind of want to see what Dorothy would look like in this scenario, but you know, whatever. Who was that Lilum? A very good friend. Monster Girlfriend Shirari. I can't stop playing this game. Gorgeous graphics, innovative and addictive battle system, fun dating minigames, cute girls, dead fucking music. Is this the goat? Dunno, do you like the goat girl? Heh. <laughs> I'm gonna marry a goat. It's an alright game. 8 out of 10 at most. Shit game. No, it's a shit shitty game for idiot waifu bots like you. It's a stupid game. Oh wait. I wish this waifu equals bad game meme would die. The stupid game pandering to idiots who- what's there to discuss? Are we being raided by normies? That's what I wonder every day. But then again, I- I realize the kind of content I put out and I'm like... Honestly, if they're actually normies, I don't think they'll stick. So... Um... M -m normies Fuck off. Fun things are fun. You're not allowed to have fun with video games. True facts. Said here. Today. Live. Little I'm receiving mysterious messages by Lana Smithy. Halloween was back in October, but this terrifying tale didn't become popular until now. Reports say that Lilum across the city have been receiving strange transmissions with messages that are confusing at best and threatening at worst. The contents are not clear, as most of the Lilum can't remember exactly what they had heard. But... The most mysterious thing of all is perhaps the fact that all the Lilum could not record any of these messages while they were broadcasted. It was as it was almost as if something had blocked the Lilum from doing so. While we have proof, uh, while we have nothing but anecdotal proof, even among our own Lilum, the mystery behind these messages is one we should be paying attention to. Back to you, nobody, because this wasn't a newscast. Hiramiki, the biggest pop idol in history. Sounds like a bait. Nacho, dog, dog, dog. The world at large is still coming to, to terms with the idea of the Lilum being so quickly integrated into our society. Some say they can't be treated as humans because they're immortal, and as such cannot really understand what it's like to be alive. But most of the Kiramiki fandom would disagree. Anti-Lilum people are insane. To me, Miki knows more about life than I do, and I'm older than this damn city. Richard Show, 55, told the Augmented Eye during a fan gathering. I'm with Richard, added Nacho, 6. I may be a dog, but I'm utterly fascinated with the way she writes about things in her blog. She's impressed by everything, and nobody really knows what life's about anyway. Does she think that this is the Rad Sheba? It's possible, but I'm not sure. Certain. Quincy studies the possibility of allowing imports. Shocks. Glitch City is one of the few places on Earth that's strictly self-sufficient with an import rate of uh, only 0.8%. However, that might change due to the recent shortages across the city. Prime Minister Quincy revealed, So the capitalization of Quincy makes me think that the Prime Minister's a robot? That's just me. Reveal it this morning that uh, the government plans to have a few more, uh, a more relaxed policy for importers. We won't lift the currency control, but we can provide them foreign currency at a low fixed rate. That way, we can secure essential items at, an, uh, at affordable prices. Quincy told AE. 
Some experts say that private companies are no longer working at full capacity, which is unsurprising news given that the Quincy government has seized most of them, resulting in the shortage crisis in the first place. <clears throat> now back to your daily scheduled uh, cringy voice acting. Nothing more from the Kiramiki blog. Okie doke, let's go to work then. So I'm drinking some sort of energy drink, but it's non-carbonated, and I don't know, what's Guayaki organic brand Yerba Mate? They sell it at my school, but I've like, and probably can get it at Whole Foods, because it seems like one of those drinks. I only have it with me right now because some guys on the quad were handing out for free. And I was thirsty. Evening. Ah, uh, hey. How are you feeling? A little more soft. And warm. Come again? You heard me. So, on a scale from steaming pile of shit to just sad, where are you? Hmm. Sad pile of shit? I still hate myself. I'm still sad as hell, but... How to put it? The noise stopped. What a good representation. I, I'm like, yeah, the noise stopped. I don't know if I explained myself. Sorta. Kinda. So, how were things last night? Cozy, I must admit. I can't believe you paid Dorothy for that. Well, if you want to call that payment, I guess. Hmm? I called Dorothy to tell her what happened to you and she was really concerned. She stuttered for a second saying that she had the whole night to go and she couldn't just leave for free. I asked her how much she... And she said, enough to pay for this soda I'm having is fine. Friends. How did you get her number? I have... Contacts. Right. Anyways, Jill. If you need a second break, a drink, or a hug, just let me know. You hear? Thanks. I'd make you the same offer, but I'm guessing hugs from me are the last thing you want. If you need a bartender, let me know, though. Nice to know. Anyways, we have work to do. Everybody's being all friendly. I love it. Uh, how do I... Right. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Eh, it's nice to hear that again. Did you say something? Did I? They have a great relationship. Welcome to Valhal. Oh, it's you guys. Hey, be more respectful. I brought my boss here. This is the guy that shows up in the Twitch poster when you look up Valhalla, by the way. Aren't you a part-timer here or something? My other boss. You know what I'm saying? The other, the, I got two, two big guys over here. You got, you, you know, you got the one and then this is the other guy. You're talking to the great Nacho Tumbleweed Jr. You better remember his name. So this is probably the guy in the interview. Boss, I'm taking my break. I know what I said earlier, but you haven't even started yet. Shit. So what brings you here today? <clears throat> I wanted to see the place my best soldier is working at. 
soldier? Wait, aren't you the dog I served last Monday? Oh, it's you, Dana. Soldier, why didn't you tell me you were working for Dana? No, that's not Dana. That's just Jay. So I'm guessing you're part of this whole Sira thing? Part of it. I founded it. Humans have the best intentions, but they just don't get us. So I decided to create a place where dogs can be dogs. Here. We can take in any dog without a place in this world. We created our own heaven on earth. Glory to the dog kind. Oh my god. I need a chill. You get what I mean. <laughs> and you take corgis only? Do I look like one of those cypher bitches? Of course not. I'd include other animals, but sadly, I can only take care of those who are of the same species as I. That sounds like you only take care of corgis. Sad thing is, I'd take him more seriously. But it's a talking corgi with an eye patch. Will you get anything? I'm fine. What about you, boss? Manly stuff. You sure? Did I stutter? All right. All right, you want manly? We we'll give you the manly, the crevice spike. With some heavy karma try. Apparently it can sober you up though. Here. Yes, this is just what I wanted. Blech. This tastes worse than my own butt. Hey, you asked for it. This is a really nice place, you know? You picked a good place to work at, soldier. Thanks. Does he really get paid? Your efforts to keep Sierra afloat will not go to waste. We'll make her better and better. I mean, we're pretty much on the verge of closing. Can Voss really afford that? We have more urgent matters at hand, though. Like the fact we don't have enough balls for everyone. Can't they just share the ones we have? You fool! Every dog has a right to have his own ball. Oh, no, I want to do a Russian accent. But he's more of a G.I. Joe type. I'll just stick with what I'm doing. We can't provide even that. And what's the point of even trying? Wait, don't tell me she just doesn't give a fuck and is spending all of her money like water. I mean, what with the bar closing and all that. But many have enjoyed the boxes more than they do the balls. You gotta think about this a little, uh, what's the word? With a little bit of financial sense, you know what I'm saying? That's a good, sorry. <clears throat> That's a good point. What do you think is cheaper? A box of balls or a box of boxes? Are there boxes of boxes? Of course there are. How do you think they ship boxes? Tied together? Tied together. Don't be silly. Unless she's paying them straight from her pocket. Boss is that kind of woman. This world is filled with all sort of recursive madness, you know? Doctors consult doctors, boxes come in boxes, bottles come in bottles. Oh, yeah, as expected from you, boss. Wait, that theory only works assuming she's actually paying him with money. For all I know, she might be paying him with stakes. So tomorrow, you're gonna check for people selling boxes, you hear? 
Sir, yes, sir. Except that to boss, a good stake is more valuable than money. Wait, what if they come with the foil? I don't know, I don't really do that foil stuff, you know? Russ and Strauss had to be taken to the vet because he ate the foil a piece of cheese came in. That boy, he was shitting for weeks. I seen him. Curses. You're right. We need a contingency plan. Besides, boss is not one to scam people, let alone a dog. I wonder if we can strike a deal with the vet those safe our bastards have. She's always so nice with us. I know. A smile real cute too. Love that human. So it's better that we vet for a vet? You know what I'm saying? Yes. Put that on the list. Ah, Nacho. Oh yeah, I forgot she knew the dog. Are you staying for a while? I was just passing by. I've got some errands to run. Great! Jill can go with you. I can? You will. I'll still get paid for today, right? That depends on Nacho's evaluation. Alright, Greenhorn, let's get going! Oh, I'm paying him anyways, by the way. Just wanted to mess around with him. No, that's not the problem here. Why make him do that? Joe looked like he needed to take a good break, and he's the kind just to, uh, to just not accept such a thing. But with Nacho, he'd have something to do. And he'd be away from the bar for a bit. When you put it that way. Anyway, I'm going back to my office. Your boss sure is nice. Glad I'm working with her too. You know, it's my kind of lady. She give me the she give me the sugar when I need the sugar, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you having any anything? Actually, I'm just gonna go sit over there and be on standby. You know, awaiting the orders like a good dog. That's uh that's what I do. Okay. Shit, I missed the chance to ask how, or if he even gets paid with money. Who was Betty? Man, I sure need to get wasted. Oh, right, 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 right. The doctor, that. I fail to see how getting wasted will make you feel that- SHIVA! Fuck's sake, you piece of crap. We just got out of a building full of dogs. This one has a Hawaiian shirt and sunglasses. Hey there, robot. And he talks. <sighs> Welcome to Valhalla. Hey, Jill. Get me a beer, will you? Gotcha, does do you want anything? Okay. Roll! Sir, yes, sir! So cute. He's fine. Just a beer then. Friday after work isn't just a beer though, it's the beer. Can't argue with that. Beer for Betty. I can make it big for the heck of it. I think I will. Two, one, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mixed. Here, let's make it special. Yeah! Sorry. Yeah! Cheers! Hey, Jill, do you like beer? The amount of beer cans in my apartment is becoming a problem, actually. You might call it a drinking problem. I had this friend back in high school who made some pretty nice crafts with them. I'm still in contact with him if you're interested. No thanks. The last thing I need right now is more crap taking space. So, 
How are things up at Dogtown? Well, that Laura girl is stirring things up for better or for worse. For worse. She's, um, like a rabbit? An overtly politically correct rabbit? R rabbit? Never had a pet rabbit? They're a nervous thing that gets startled over the littlest of things. And this girl is on the con the constant work. And this girl is on the constant lookout, scared of saying something that might irk someone. It doesn't have to be the person she's speaking with, even. It's no problem in the company, but the other day we went out together, and holy shit, poor girl can't speak properly. She pauses every sentence to make sure she doesn't say something offensive. She's a nice girl, and it's sweet that she tries so hard to not offend anyone. But seriously, she tries too hard. You don't want to help either. Hmm? You randomly yell, What did you say? Whenever she's within earshot distance. Yeah, well... It's just that... She looks so cute when she's startled. Like a rabbit. It raises up the question of whether she's really like that. Or if you're the one making her wary of anything she says. Well, why don't we test that? How... You go out with her. Why? To test if it's really me who makes her like that. It's not like you can say no, you know? I mean, it's my honor that's on the line here. I want to prove you're only talking shit about me. Even if you were right, you have quite the fixation on that girl. She's fun. Fun how? She actually reacts when I tease her. You're just discriminating against me because I'm a robot. <laughs> you take it in your stride. But she actually gets startled. Squirms and then gets uncomfortable. How is that any good? Cute, and her reactions are cute. But if you keep it up, she'll either leave or get used to you. And then we'd have another case of domestic abuse. You know, like me. Shit. You're right. I must save my teasing for when the moment is just right then. Savor the look on her face. Capture it on camera. No, that's not the problem. It is for me. And what are you doing here? What about the dog? He said he had to go out. By the way, he said his name was... Say, this Laura girl. Do you guys get along? I wouldn't know. We get along as co-workers at the very least. What kind of girl is she? Aside from the whole politically correct rabbit thing. Slow. She's the kind that does things so carefully that she does them really, really slowly. Really, really slowly. I can't deny that when she actually finishes stuff, she does a great job, but... It's unnerving? She doesn't actually have to be with us in the building, though. She's more like... A freelancer? Why is she there, then? Because she likes dogs. And that's why I insist that you two would make a fine couple. That's a really superficial statement. It's like saying you'd be fine with someone because you're both women. Okay, 
you're a lesbo, I know. Bad example. You didn't have to be so mean about it. May I say something? By all means, I guess. If that Laura girl is really as bland as you claim her to be, wouldn't she be better off with a more, um, more assertive person, Lilum? Uh, a more assertive partner? Yo, piece of scrap. She's totally calling you a pussy. I lost her character entirely. Because I'm obviously doing her wrong, and she's a lot more gruff than the voice I gave her. She's right, though. Sharing interests and being compatible are totally different things. But then you'd be underestimating the power of love. Whether you want to admit it or not, love changes people for better or for worse. Who knows? Maybe you'll become more assertive after spending time with her. Or she'll drive me nuts and then I'll want to kill myself. I guess that's a possibility too. One that we'd have to be willing to take, you know? Still, why are you so insistent on me and her getting together? I don't even have, like, sex thingies. Because she's like a cute rabbit. So someone might try to eat her out there. Wow, we're getting really, 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 really graphic and explicit and whatnot. It'd be a lot easier to keep her in my sight. Like all things should be. So in short, your mama instincts arose because of Laura? Is that why you baby me so much? You fucking cougar? <sighs> Why not see if she likes you and... You already tried to hit on her, didn't you? You make me sound like some kind of skirt-chasing cougar, which I totally am, but, you know, she just couldn't handle the heat. She's not into girls. And honestly... She's that much more of a pussy for it. How did you find out? I asked her directly. Because I have a bigger dick than you. Of course you did. She seemed, um... Giddy afterwards, though. I heard her muttering something about meeting her first lesbian. It was weird. Okay. Enough Laura for a night. That... Refrain from using any that's what you said last night jokes or variations thereof. Please. Party pooper. Let's get a drink then. Sounds good. I'll have a bloom light, please. Get me a fringe weaver. Alright. One, two, three, four. Interesting that he wants this one. It's not what I normally imagine.
I really want to buy this soundtrack. I mean, the fact that I haven't already. It's available on Spotify. That's the cool thing, you know? Here you go. I wonder why it's called a bloom light. Is that like a sex thing? Seems it was first developed at some video games event. The creator said something about making the attendees feel like their customers do. Meaning, like shit, of course. Said attendees were, of course, part of some big games company. Seems that company always used too much bloom lighting, so the bartender there literally made them all drink. Made them drink all the bloom. Oh, okay. So it's not called that because it glows in the dark? Not this one, no. Come to think of it, did you ever change because of a relationship, Jill? In more ways than one, I guess. Would you say for better or for worse? I guess for the better. I'm too thick-headed to develop any new bad habits. Although, thanks to my first boyfriend, I did pick up a very annoying habit of correcting people's grammar on the fly. Pretty annoying when I think back to it. So you were one of those kinds of people. As for me, sometimes I think I became more... Uh, what's the word? Cynical? Gated? Bitter? Tired of the crap that this world and everyone in it throws on a daily basis? Hey! I'm just quoting you. Yeah. I think I became all that because of this one girlfriend I had in college. She got me into the whole activism thing in the first place. How was that bad? We'd go all go and protest. We'd start all kinds of movements to see things changed. I drew lots of vaginas on flags and she... Well, she was in mine, so you know. I really got into the whole thing. Really felt liberating. It was also the first time I tried drugs. But whenever I wanted to get more serious, I'd find myself coming up against a wall. That wall is an analogy for the fact that not everyone was willing to go that far. I mean, I wanted some butt stuff, but she just wasn't ready to play. I found out pretty fast that most of them were in the whole thing because of some shitty fad. And not because they actually believed in whatever movement they were championing. I mean, the drugs were nice though. So I moved from group to group, only to find people who were in it because of a fad. And when they were not in it because of a passing fad, they were of the dangerous extremist kind. And that whole blood play stuff was just a little too much for me. Not that I'm vanilla or anything. My tolerance for people's shit was greatly diminished after all that. So it wasn't so much the person you had a relationship with, but rather other people. Um... You seriously never thought about it that way? Uh... You need to stop putting the blame for what you do on past relationships. Whatever. Where's the other guy, by the way? He had to escort one of the dogs outside. Figures. Oh yeah. The one that was here asked if you were the nice vet lady that works at the Safar Toy Company. I suppose he's interested in talking to you or something. Well, why the fuck didn't he do it then? I don't know, cause you're a huge bitch. You've been doing a few jobs on the side, haven't you? Pay from dogs isn't enough to keep up with the mounting debts. I mean college, and then my new heroin addiction. I don't know how you do it. It's hard to believe dogs pay you at all. This is coming from someone who, uh, working at a place that pays a dog for doing fuck all. 
Or at least, I think we're paying him. I'm not completely certain we do. Will you get anything else? Well... We're fine. But we have to get up early tomorrow. And by we, I really mean her. She got invited to a picnic, and I won't stand to hear another had to go to a picnic with a hangover story. You know what that shit's like? She keeps kicking me in the nuts when she does that. Fine. Let's go then, you big pussy. See ya, Jill. Taste you some other time. Bye. Please come again. Man, you're such a party pooper. It will be the party pooper tomorrow if you keep drinking, you fucking elk. Boss, I'll be taking my break. Call me if someone comes. All right. Notice that the game was says it's published in 2069. Nice. So if you noticed, I'm trying some new stuff this stream. I hope it's well received. If not, I can always go back. I mean, overall, it's more talking. Just figured it'd be a little bit more engaging. No dogs in sight. Good. It's, uh, very good. Okay then, back to work. Welcome to Vaha. Oh hey there, Alma. Um. <sighs> she seems down. Maybe there's something I can give her to cheer her up. She might like classy drinks, but what she really likes. She usually gets like a fringe weaver or something. What does she really like? I could be so wrong about this and then, well, there goes my flawless bonus. Hey! Hmm? And this? It's on me. Drink, so you at least change your expression. Why not just say you're worried about me? You got the message anyway, didn't you? Huh. So, how is it? Well... Not bad. Sweet things always soothe me, so I figured it would help you too. You sound like... Uh, you sound like my little brother. Just replace sweet with meat. Oh, with meat, though. She likes meat? So, why are you deflating? Deflating? I did her Ojozama voice, but I don't really... I don't know if I have the vocal profile for somebody who is clearly like a... Uh... 
She's kind of a tough girl, you know? No, 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 not, that's not right. Like a aloof girl? With a little bit of like a sensual voice? Flating? When I got sad and started sighing repeatedly, my grandpa would warn me that I would start deflating like an old tire if I kept it up. <laughs> so what is it? Was it the news about people dressing in bunny suits after the whole Alice Rabbit boom? Nah, uh, that's... that is old news. I mean, it is a problem, but such a thing would only annoy me. Say, Jill, how's your mood right now? I want to ruin it by blowing off all my stored steam. Silly Alma, I've been feeling like utter shit the last couple of days. You can't make me feel worse. So go ahead, unwind all your worries on me. Don't say I didn't warn you. Okay, so... Remember my sister, Diana? The one that separated from her husband and forgot her kids while fucking her way around or something? Perfect summary. I'll use it next time. I didn't tell you the whole story then. More specifically, that she threw her husband out after months of abuse. Oh. However, that woman is incapable of getting a job and maintaining herself. And I mean that... She never even thinks about selling some stuff or trying to earn her bread. She just expects a guy to do all that for her. I have no idea why she turned out like that. Both my mom and dad were hard workers. They even started a small shop to have something to do after retirement. Huh. So... What does this fully capable woman do a couple of weeks later? Why, bring her abusive husband back, of course! What? Yeah, and the guy spent a couple of days with her before leaving her again. He had a nice couple of hot, steamy nights and then left. Uh, I, well... Huh, you reacted like my little brother and sister after hearing that. But the story doesn't end there, oh no. So she's broke and can't even get enough for a bus. Even though she'd probably be glad to sell her ass just to get money. And it was up to me to pick her up. For the last couple of days, she left her kids with my parents. And being such sweet angels, they've made a mess out of the whole place. Bernardo and Eva are actually staying with me a couple of days to give them some, some peace. It doesn't help that I never got along with Diana. So we're in the car and she asks how her kids are. And of course, after all the built up tension, I just exploded. First, I started ranting about how her kids are growing up seeing some messed up shit. I started scolding her about not taking responsibility about not taking proper care of her children. And I tell her that she's in no place to have all those escapades. And after all that, she just says, what the hell do you know? You don't have any kids. Yeah, you slutty skank. I don't have kids, but I'm not broke just because I refuse to take a job. I don't have kids, but I'm not leaving them in the first but in the first barely familiar house I find. I don't have kids, but I'm not letting the guy that hit on me hit me on a regular basis back into my bed. I don't have kids, but I pretty much raised Evan Bernardo, and they turned out pretty damn well. Somebody's right outside, and I cannot raise my volume. <sighs> I don't have kids, but I'm not a cheap whore! Sorry, louder, but you know, you got the idea. Uh You didn't really think I was gonna Sorry. Damn. I don't know what to say. <sighs> There's nothing to say. I love my family and I put them above all else. Diana is seriously pushing the boundaries of what I can allow. 
Any way I could help? You just did. Eh? I know who I'm dealing with. I'm not one to let stuff like that get to me. Still angry as hell, though. And I couldn't just discuss this with any of my family members. I can't tell my mom, your daughter is a slut. I just needed to get all of this off my chest, you know? Well, from what I see, there's still a lot more to get off your chest. It's swollen as fuck. Nah, all you see here is filled with love and dreams. Is everyone in your family as busty as you? The worst offender is my dad, actually. Kidding, kidding. I guess the only one that didn't get the big boobs gene was Eva. She insists on getting surgery or genetic treatment, but I tell her she's fine the way she is. These can actually be more of a hassle than a blessing. And poor Bernardo. His breasts actually started growing when he was eight. I just hope I don't take too much from my, my mother's side of the family. My father's sisters still look quite young, but when menopause hit, my mom lost her looks rather quickly. Any good genes you got from your family, Jill? Good enough skin and hair, I guess. There's a thing about a shrimp allergy, but so far I haven't had problems with that. Oh, I see. Hey, you know what worries me the most about the whole Diana situation? How your nephews are turning out? She leaves them with my mom. They'll turn out better than her. Somehow. Actually, what worries me is... What if I end up like that too? How so? If I find a good man and I settle down... What if he turns out shitty? What if I have a sudden burst where I want to live my life and end up like that? And what if I have kids and I end up neglecting them because of all that? If you ask me, the fact that you're even worried about it is indication enough that you'll be fine. Think? I'm pretty sure. You said before that she pretty much married the guy after a couple of months, right? Yeah. No offense, but those are the kind of people who wouldn't even think about all that. Besides, if any guy ends up marrying you, it's because he passed your irrational standards. Hey! Am I lying? No... There are things best kept as unspoken truths. I wonder if I'll ever find a good guy. You will. You'll know when the time comes. I sure hope so. For now, the time has come to get another drink. And what can I get you? Hmm. Give me something with ice, but alcoholic, please. Alright. Old and alcoholic, so... Does it matter? This looks good. One. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. One. I just realized there you can kind of scum these a little bit by like giving your customers the more expensive stuff when they leave it open ended so long as it fills their needs, right? Here you go. Thanks. I needed to cool down a bit. That's why I'm here. So, you said you felt shitty the last couple of days. Why? Don't don't think too much about it. Oh, come on! You heard my problems. I want to help you, too. Don't worry too much. Right. I almost forgot to tell you something. What is it? My boss is throwing a mega Christmas party this Sunday. You want to come? Sure. Something tells me this mega Christmas is going to be a mess at my parents' home, so I'd rather avoid it. Are you guys getting chicken? I can get one. As opposed to turkey. Hmm. To be honest, I wouldn't know. You can bring it if you want. It won't go to waste. Gotcha. Hmm. Say, so, Jill, what's your favorite part of the chicken? Favorite part? I guess I like legs the most. 
Really? I like breast better. Breast is a bit too simple, don't you think? Legs have a better texture. Maybe, but simple is usually better. Breast is easier to enjoy than legs, and a lot less messy. Hmm, hmm, hmm. You silly girls. Boss? You're there talking about breasts and legs when everyone knows the best part are the wings! Boss, what's that? Spicy chicken wings. Where did you get spicy chicken wings? From a spicy chicken. You know, spicy chicken. The shop two blocks from here. Sorry, let me phrase that. Why are you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Why aren't you carrying a bucket of spicy chicken wings? Well, because... Huh? Thought as much. Yo, Armitage. Alma. I know what I said. Will the chicken you're talking about be cooked already? You might need to heat it up. Sorry. You might need to heat it up. But it'd be cooked otherwise. Great! I expect you here Sunday at 8 p.m. Thanks. Anyway, I'll be back to my office. She left the bucket. Want some? Don't mind if I do. Oh, mild spice. Nice. Weird, maybe she got a mixed up order. And that's why she left them here? She usually orders stronger stuff? I found buckets that make my throat itch just from being near them. Oh. Hmm. Say, Jill, what kind of guys do you like? That's a sudden question. I'm not too picky with guys, to be honest. I want them to be decent enough. Not jealous, not aggressive, responsible enough to keep a job. That's no good. Do you like them buff? What about tall? Oh, we're we getting in this conversation. Hmm. No tattoos or piercings, I guess. Never liked either. Well, I guess I'm out. What about you? I like them well-dressed. They go out in iron shirts and well-coordinated clothes. They're sure to catch my eye. Some muscles always fine too, but sharply dressed males catch my attention faster. And yet you're still single. That's how I like my men. My potential husband on the other hand is another complete, uh, another matter completely. I see. So, can you get me a drink here? The spicy wings turn out to be spicy. What do I get you? Anything, as long as it helps me with the spiciness in my mouth. Okay. Something, uh... <laughs> It'd be really funny if I gave her a spicy drink, huh? Beer goes good. But, um, she probably wants ice. Uh. Frothy water doesn't have ice in it. Does sour go good? I don't... Alright, this. You gotta get the armor trine in though. Here you go. <coughs> Not the most pleasant thing, but it helped. Alright, so next question. What kind of girl do you like? 
Mm. Mm-hmm. You first. Sorry, I don't swing that way. Sure, I have no qualms about saying a girl is cute or cool, but... Nope, I prefer men in my bed. Now you. Shit, just, uh... Calm down. I, I guess I like girls with light-colored hair? Light-colored hair? Yeah, yeah, you know, like... Redheads and such. What about white? Like your boss? You were just setting me up for that comment, weren't you? Sorry, it's just that when she got out here with your... The bucket of wings, your eyes pretty much started sparkling. Your whole behavior transformed. You became giddy and cheerful all of a sudden. Hey, I can't blame you. She's pretty nice. And I just felt like teasing you. So, light colored hair. What about blondes? You like me? Yeah, I guess. Let's say I'm into girls too, and I start hitting on you. Would you go along with it? Nice body, pretty face, and a good apartment? I would never let you go. <laughs> okay then, enough tangents. Why don't you tell me why you're feeling shitty these la why you're feeling shitty these last few days? What? Oh, that. I told you not to think too much about it. And I told you I want to know. Come on, Jill. You've heard my problems so many times. Now I want to help you. Come on, come here. Eh? I told you to sit here. Come on. Eh, what? What are you? Ooh, I got the frontal. Ooh, this is cool. Is is she um behind the counter now? Sorry, my reaction was a bit much. I just saw, but uh. All right then, now I'm the bartender and you're the client. Hardly, the bartending station only works with me. I see. Okay then, I move this here, click. Here and. Now it works for you, for me, and that dog in a Hawaiian shirt. Why with him too? I wanted to see more of Jill, this is great. He's a dog, in a fucking Hawaiian shirt. Right, and how did he even manage to... Oh yeah, hacker, right. Now we've changed roles. You've been feeling shitty, mind telling me why? It's a long story. I don't even know where to start. Start from the beginning. Okay then. Something that goes back to my college years. Whoa, that's taking it way back. Back in compulsory education, I never made too much of an effort, but I managed to get high grades. Even in PE, I managed to do well enough to always get perfect grades. And then, of course, when I got to college, shit started getting hard. I had this perfectionist streak that wouldn't let me fail anything. Burning my eyelashes studying, I eventually managed to keep up good grades. After about half of the career, I met a student teacher. Her name was Lenore. She helped me a lot with my studies. She even got me into stuff that gave, me, uh, that gave more credits. I really liked her, and after some time, I found out she liked me too. Oh ho ho! We started going out, and I, I met all of her family even, and... You want a drink? What? A drink. Around this time, there's usually a pause that makes you offer a drink to the client. There was no such pause. Please, I want to test this whole bartending interface. <sighs> a sugar rush then. You can't mess that up. Right. One, two, one, and get Jill drunk. Oof, that's a lot. 
Well, all mixed. Here! Thanks. How is it? Like I said, you can't mess up a sugar rush. Hmm. I have this gut feeling that with your body, you'd make a better bartender than me. You're selling yourself too short. You're cute, you know? People don't go to bars for cuteness, though. You've obviously never been to a cat bar, then. Besides, my boobs can be a hassle when trying to move around this kind of stuff. So, keep telling the story. <sighs> well, as the career went on and on, and got harder and harder, the last year and a half of it became nothing but study session after study session. Investigations, my thesis. When the graduation ceremony came, I had to make a speech and suddenly, while reading said speech, I almost had a panic attack. Fear of public speaking? I realized I lost about a year and a half of my life. I tried to remember if I did anything fun at all, but all I could remember was studying and investigating new topics. I didn't even enjoy doing all that, so I was just standing there, and the satisfaction of graduating was minimal. I realized I'd only gone through the motions, day after day, from high school to graduating. I felt like whole years of my life had slipped through my fingers. I never stopped to think if I enjoyed what I was doing. In fact, I never stopped. But at that point, I stopped. And realized I needed a breather or something. I even like that career. It's all terrifying as hell. I needed all of my strength to not start running like a panicked mess. Hmm. So, a couple months... So, a couple of months later, I get an offer to start working at this big research facility. Lenora was ecstatic. She was so proud of me back then. But I was just scared. That would be my job. I'd spend my life expanding on what I did during that year and a half. What if I had a sudden realization like the one I had at graduation, but when I turned 40? I didn't know what to do, but I sure as hell wasn't taking that offer. I told Lenora and she freaked out. She confessed that she was jealous because she never got such a chance. And things devolved pretty quickly. She said one too many things, I said one too many things. In the end, I just stormed out of her house. And I broke a vase in the process. After that, I never spoke to her again. Damn. I'm sorry, I... I suddenly feel bad for pushing you to tell me all that. Why are you feeling shitty about that after all this time, though? Unless you've been feeling, uh, unless you've been feeling shitty for years. I have, but it's not just because of that. Eh? The other day, Lenore's sister, Gabrielle, came to this bar. Apparently, Lenore died last week. Localized nanomachine rejection. A heart attack. Apparently, she had it for a long time, but never told anyone. And, coincidentally, it got worse after I left. And I just can't stop thinking about it. Wondering if me being there would have made a difference. And if it's true she had that for a long time. Now, and if it's true she had that for a long time, why didn't she tell me she was sick when we were together? I don't know, I just feel... Like all kinds of failure. Jill. And to make it worse, I also lashed out at Gabby. Yes, she was blaming me for her sister's death and all, but... She's just a kid for fuck's sake. She lost the sister who pretty much raised her on her own. And to top it all off, I suddenly can't remember what stopped me from apologizing. 
pride, fear, a stupid effort to leave the most awesome person I loved as a thing of the past? Who cares? I lost my chance to apologize to her forever. Truly forever. Such a piece of shit. Selfish piece of shit. I honestly don't know what to say. I didn't expect the story to be this. I. Yo. Boob tender. Yes? Can you get me a big beer here? Coming right up! Big beer for Jill. Thanks. I need to remember to take care of the cans in my apartment. Do you drink lots of beer? One of the perks of the BTC issued liver implant is that I can drink lots of beer without getting too wasted. Oh. Hey Jill, what kind of girl was Lenore? Hmm. Well, she was calm and smart. Back in college, I was too thick-headed and got riled up easily. Stressed was my, my default state. So, just like you're behaving right now. Shut up. I was worse. Can't picture that. Don't. It's embarrassing. Anyway, she was always there, finding a way to cool me down. She was also able to hold conversations about pretty much any topic. One time, I saw her go from talking about video games to talking about sports. All of that variety while still being a hardcore scientist. She would always push me into social interactions. If she saw me by myself, she would drag me with her. Watching people is fine, but talking to them is better, she would say. Lenore would always present me to her many acquaintances as the girl I don't mind cuddling with for hours. And I'm gonna miss her. After a point, I didn't even think about getting back into a relationship with her, but she was such an awesome person, I just wanted to apologize. And now... You know, in a cruel twist of irony, she's the one that made me pick up bartending. Oh? Back when I was thinking what the hell to do with my life, I remembered a night we spent in a club. She started talking about how we how the drinks were synthesized, the chemistry involved, the reactions and all that. Everything sounded so fascinating. I remember saying that her talk made me want to start mixing drinks. She said, if everything else fails, why not take up bartending? Huh. Interesting. Are you okay? For some value of okay, yeah. It's just... I wanted to thank you, Alma. Thank me. I guess I just needed someone to tell all of this to. You're the one. You volunteered yourself. You insisted on listening to me. You stood there, listening to the whole thing from beginning to end. I know I might not be the most expressive person, that I'm not one to spout love and fluffiness, but... I really like you. Maybe I'm just a bartender and you're just a client, but I really appreciate your friendship. Or, at the very least, your patronage. I really enjoy working for you. Jill? Are you dying? Shut up! I'm trying to have a heart-to-heart -heart here! Sorry, sorry, it's just... It's weird for you to get so... Sappy. Well, I just realized that the saddest thing is how I'll never be able to make amends. And it hurts like fucking hell, you know? I never, I mean, never want to feel that way ever again. I don't want someone to suddenly exit my life and have my last memory of them involve something nasty. I don't want the lingering grief of having burned a bridge on a whim. 
I want to avoid that at any cost. If it means breaking character every once in a while, so be it. I'll let everyone know how I really feel about them. If I ever fight with them, I'll swallow my pride, muster all the courage I can, and be the one to apologize. I hate feeling like this. Hate it. Hate it. <laughs> That's a nice resolution. Maybe I'll be a copycat and do the same. All right, enough sappiness. Get back here. I'm on duty, you know. Fine. It's almost closing time anyways. It was fun while it lasted, though. Hey. Yeah? I, I mean it, you know. Thanks for everything today. Silly Jill, you listen to my problems and I listen to yours. That's what friends are for, right? Right. I'll be leaving now. Oh, before I forget. Do you ever talk about all this with your parents? They know the basics, but I haven't told them about Lenore's death yet. Why don't you do that sometime? I don't know. I don't want to bother them with my problems. Don't be silly. They're your parents. They live to share your problems. You should try having a talk like this with them sometime. They'll appreciate it. Anyway, I'm out. See you on Sunday. Take care. That Alma girl sure is nice. Uh, boss, did, did you hear all that? Not all of it, but a good chunk, at the very least. Your expression changed a lot already. It did? You look happier. That's always good. Anyway, let's call it a day. I expect an even brighter Jill tomorrow. Right. Oh yeah, boss. About those chicken wings. Fucking idiots at the spicy chicken. Sorry, Dana. We, ha we won't have enough spices for your order until tomorrow, they said. Is that how they treat their regulars? Call them. Boss? I made a mistake. And cherish Titty Hacker, she's a good friend. So, your account was charged $8,000 as payment for your electricity bill. Have a nice day! Jill's power didn't get cut. This gives her peace of mind, and now she'll focus at work with no problem. Have a nice day. Bill paid. Didn't you have a boyfriend named Bill? Let's see. We're gonna save. Let's see what's on, uh... Alright, Grand Slam Fighters. Is anyone into wrestling here? I became a huge fan of G GSF re very recently. It's a really solid product, IMO. Much better than the E. I like the match quality, but I wish they gave importance to the mid card. Are they still forcing 66 American Kid into the main event? Yep. He's going to face Yusuke at the Dome Show. Why don't they push the great DK instead? He's much more talented than 66. Because American Kid actually moves merch unlike your indie darling. I want to marry Yusuke. Who's hyped for the women's championship? That one should be... That one should be the main event, not the turd we're getting instead. 66 is pretty good, just watch some of his work in Japan. Everyone tells me 66 was better in Japan, but all I see is locks and arm bars. Nothing that impressive. Wrestling is fake. Amazing how all, how I know all the words, yet I understand nothing. Can I buy music? I guess not. Is it in the shop? I'm gonna buy that because I feel like it gives you the song. 
could be wrong, though. Uh, any other... In Who's this mascot? Camel Tan is our mascot. She's designed by our veteran character designer from Sukebe, uh, Sukeban Games, Kiririn51, who you can follow on Twitter. Um, <laughs> it's true. Birthday 2401, 85, 65, 90. Likes Musashi Battleship, Tactic Cool Fashion, and Peach Cake. Uh, what other nano camels are available? That's a. Why is this so expensive? 10,000. Oh, wait, and I could change the table. The. I don't know why I'm spending money I don't have. That's just life. Lilim receiving mysterious messages. Update. It looks like we were able to uh, record and transcribe one of the messages sent from one of the compromised signals. Joe Ren, the anchor from our popular TV newscast, served as our very own test subject for the investigation. <sighs> Who are you? Are you really alive? <laughs> You're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. <sighs> Developing. I wonder if she's among those 80. The Health Observatory just released their annual report on nanomachine rejection cases. The total number of reported cases has risen to 80, an increase from the 65 cases reported last year. Nanomachine pollution was particularly strong this year due to the recent protests, wrote the observatory. Protests caused the police force to release new varieties of nanomachine. Their function is still unclear, but according to our sources, they're intended for crowd control purposes. It's unlikely we'll find a cure in the near future, and we can only hope cases like these will become rare in the following years. So nanomachines are basically a form of modern, uh, modern bio-warfare, which is kind of wild. Oh, so that's Model Warrior Julianne. Is that a tear in your eye? No. The classic magical girl show, Model Warrior Julianne, is coming back to tele public television this fe February after almost two decades of absence. Even though the show has been on, ser on every on-demand service for a while now, most of Glitch City's net uh, citizens need to think twice before subscribing to any non-essential service, especially the lower classes who have a limited number of internet purchases per year. The show's return is w certainly welcome. Today's parents will finally be able to share a piece of their childhood with the kids without risking dinner or breakfast. True. Nothing from Kiramiki. Alright, back to work. Evening. Ah, hey Jill. How are you feeling? I won't say good, but... Not that bad, I guess. That's nice to hear. Where's Jill? Did he run away again? Nah, I have him on errand duty, buying the drinks for tomorrow. That sounds weird, coming from the owner of a bar. Every drink from here would come out of our own funds. So if we're gonna spend money, we might as well get more variety. Besides, those kinds of walks are always good for Jill. You're the boss. Who's coming so far? Well, there's the three of us, the dogs. You invited Titty Hacker. Jill invited Jamie. Oh yeah, I also invited Dorothy when I called her to spend the night with you. Sounds good so far. Invite anyone else you feel like inviting. The more the merrier. I could, but I bet everyone's made plans by this point. That's true. I'll be in my office. Call me sh should anything arise. All right. Yeah, see, I got your love is a drug. Cool. Um, uh, Dawn approaches. Uh, Metropolis and. Ace of the Titan. Time to mix drinks and change lives. Wait here, I'll check inside. Welcome to Valhalla. 
I don't even know. Sorry, I gotta push my boobs out a little bit. Just in the <laughs> oh, the BTC bar. Excuse me. You know where the Athena Convention Center is? Why does that place make people get lost so easily? They should have called it the Minotaur Center. Hold on, let me scribble the directions on paper. Thanks. Go to the right. When you see a building filled with hobos, this should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm. Eh, what the hell. I'll have a drink. What about you? Um... Brantini, please. Right. The girl asked for a Brantini. The Lilum freaks me out. One. Here you are. Thanks. That's an interesting outfit in this cold season, miss. Well, I'm at... Who's she cosplaying as? I wonder. How deep does this go? Well, I'm actually cosplaying, so... Call me Vela for the time being. And your little friend is... Sentia. I get it. You're cosplaying too? Sure. Let's go with that. Have you heard of a game called Y2K, Bartender? Sorry. Have you heard of a game called Y2K, Bartender? That cult classic game that has seen like three remastered versions made by six different companies this year? That one. We're in a cosplay group dedicated to it, and we got lost on the way. I heard you talking to someone outside. Oh, yeah. A friend is cosplaying as Alex. I told him to wait outside. Shouldn't he enter? He'll be fine. Something amiss? There's a girl behind you. Short hair, black sailor uniform, missing an arm. Wearing jeans under a skirt. A ghost. Now, now, don't spook the bartender. Spook? Hmm. <clears throat> Anything else? I'll get a fluffy dream and be on my way. And you? I'm fine. Armatrine, baby. Here. Yep, this is my thing. This is the thing, sorry. Seriously though, should you leave your friend outside like that? He'll be fine. We started chatting with one of the vending machines. They were talking about R&B music. Does your friend prefer the 1980s R&B or the 1970s? Nine 1980s, I think. Oh shit. Boss, Dee Dee, r and I'm coming! Um, you see, Dee Dee is a 1970s purist. He has tased people for even liking 1980s r and before. He got tased. Oh God, he'll be fine. Vending machines have very weak tasers. He'll be confu confused for a couple of minutes. That will be that. You should go check on him, though. Right. Thanks again for the directions. Please come again. So the dude standing outside got the... Got tased, basically. Is that to prevent, like, um... Theft? Seems like a... 
pretty decent thing. <sighs> At least it wasn't Franco-Belgian comic opinions this time. Oddly specific. Black sailor uniform. I hope I'm just overthinking it. More importantly though, jeans under a skirt? Vulcan Valhalla. Oh. Hey Dorothy. Uh, oh. Hi honey. Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I guess I'm a bit distracted. Can Lilum just wander? I wanted- so I said for Dorothy she deserves a drag queen kind of voice because she- I just thought it would be really funny, I don't know. But I'm also not an observer of drag queens or a listener, so I don't really know. Anyway. Can I get you something? Oh, uh, a sugar rush? Yeah, that. Right. Dorothy seems down. She asked for a sugar rush, but hasn't she told me about a drink that cheers her up? the answer to this, but I'm... This, this is one of those cases where I would, like, reload the game. Uh... Should I just go with the Sugar Rush, then? I don't know. I'm like... I feel like the thing that she likes is the sunshine cloud, but I'm not. A beer? Cobalt Velvet. Wait. I'm just gonna run through all of them really quick to see if I can remember this. Jeez. I could cheat and look it up online, but I'm not that kind of guy right now. Um. Hmm. Buffy Dream? I want to say a sunshine and cloud, so I'm going to go for it. Alright. Damn it. Oh. Here. Thanks. She didn't notice it was the wrong drink. So much silence. By the way, thanks for staying with me the other day. Turns out I really needed that. So, did you enjoy the soda? Oh, did you find that one out? Sorry. Oh. Did you find that one out? Was it supposed to be a secret? No, don't go around telling everyone about that. Oh. I did it because it was you who needed my help, but a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. 
God, that's so wrong. Wait a second, hold on. It was way easier to do the lolly voice because I just think of it when I see her, but I'm just like, um. I'm trying way too hard with this, but that's because I have no chill, you know? I just can't not help but. Sorry, no, I just can't help but want to do my best and like really deliver. Even if my best isn't amazing. Anyway, uh, let me think about... Did it because it was you who needed my help. But a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. It is? Hey, I don't know if the client has a body odor or something like that. Not to mention it limits the chances of getting any other client that night. Still, did it help? Yeah, it helped me cool down a lot. So, from what Dana told me, someone close to you died, right? God, she sounds so annoying now. Oh, I, uh, yeah? You want to know more about it? Do you want to tell me about it? I've brought it up enough times already, I think. No problem then. You were sad and that's all I needed to know. Sorry for the loss though. I mean it. Thanks. Although I've wondered for a while, do you Lilum really understand death? Wow, that sounds insensitive. Sorta, kinda? Our whole database is constantly being backed up in the collective source. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we can be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. So, our concept of mortality might be different. We do have a fear of death, though. You do? Can't even begin to understand the idea of not being redeployed. While we have built-in warnings, the mere idea of that... ...nothingness. Paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but we do fear death and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, that was the argument used for ab abolishing the whole three laws thing. Seemed quite knowledgeable about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure I can live like I do helps me not take things for granted. Seriously though, those laws were bullshit. Can't harm humans, can't disobey, hu uh, disobey humans unless it's about hurting them. You can protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. I mean, sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools. But how could those laws still apply to them after they achieved self-awareness? Who in their right mind would abide only by rules inscribed in some old book? Ooh, shots fired. Cool. If I remember correctly, those were only the distilled versions of the laws some writer imagined over a hundred years ago. They were a reduced version of all his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took to them like they were the very laws of physics or something. Are we talking allegorically about religion? Oh my! And like many other things, people distill and exaggerate what they need and use it to their favor. Wow, you're a nerd. Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, though. Mood's getting gloomy. Your apartment's very comfy, you know? It's a tad small, though. Sorry about that. And your cat is so cute. What was his name again? Four. Why four? I figured if he ever got lost, I at least want to be able to yell, FOR! It happened once. You'd be surprised by how many golf players you run into. And every time you play with him, you could say it's foreplay. <laughs> yeah. He was also named after... someone. Really? Who? A Lilum kid that wanted to transcend. What? A 
a movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. Do you want anything else? Hmm. Let's go with a blue fairy. Alright. Blue fairy for Dorothy. Ignore me. One, two, three, four, one. I'm always doing this, why? Here. Why do they call it a blue fairy? Is it because of Pinocchio? I believe the name is based off Absinthe, which some call the green fairy. The first versions of the drink were described as sweeter Absinthe. Sadly, they had to fix the formula because people were turning green. Not blue. A bluish green. You seem to have cheered up a bit there. Yeah, talking to you always helps me get my mind off things. Hey, there's something I've wondered for a while now. What? What kind of friends do you have? I mean, are they in your same line of work, or...? Friends? Aside from you. Thank you. Hmm... Well, there's Lawrence the lo that vending machine is a lot of fun to be with. No, sorry. Hmm. Well, there's Lawrence. That vending machine is a lot of fun to be with. Once you get past his quirkiness, that is. I've also met a lot of nice people working in the streets. From the top of my head, I can think about Nightingale, another Lilum. He changed himself to have fur and a more wolf-like face. He's also a pretty good pianist. Plays in a jazz band on the weekends. There's also Nate Nadira, a drag queen and the owner of a club I've been invited to a few times. She has an animal shelter on the side. I help her with it occasionally. Oh, there's also Sister Clementine, a, nur a nun from an orphanage. I go there sometimes and play with the kids. Whoa, that's something I didn't expect to hear. I also... Got the. I also almost got adopted once. I was flattered, but it was weird. Oh, and it turns out I already knew your boss. Some years ago, she. She what? She what? I said too much. Client confidentiality and all that. Hmm. <clears throat> well, enough tangents. Why were you gloomy in the first place? Gloomy? When you came in, I don't know if gloomy is the right word, but you were pretty quiet at the very least. And knowing how you normally are, it was pretty weird. Ugh, don't worry about that. I just had one too many things going on in my mind. I wasn't gloomy or anything. More like... distracted, really. Well, I think I'll go now. Thanks for lending me an ear, honey. Boss told you about the party tomorrow, right? Yup, I wouldn't dare to miss that. Okay then. Alright then, see you tomorrow! Good luck. Thanks! And that's that. Boss, I'll be taking my break. Alright. How we doing on time? Ah, we're coming up on the end of the stream. But I think I can get through the next section, probably. Yeah. Does my time not show right? Weird. Like the time in the my stream labs of ooh. Clicking on the wrong thing. My time in the Streamlabs uh countdown thingy. I'll I'll go adjust that later. If you guys notice, like I I I told you I was like putzing around with the panels down there. Let me know if they look okay. Uh I'm not like a graphic designer or anything like that, but I feel like it was better than what I had before. I need to remember to buy more cigars. Why?
back. Did I miss something? Unless you count... Unless you count the worst PPV main event fight I've seen all year? Not really, no. Alright. Going out. I'll have a word with Gogo -Go outside. He was so hyped for that match, he must be devastated. Okay. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh. Hi, Say. Good evening, Jill. How are you doing? Wow. The nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. Hmm. Um, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally closed. The scars itch a bit, though. Well, that's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm running a couple of errands by myself today, but I wanted to come here for a while. I also noticed the big guy from last time is outside. Buster? Stella didn't wa doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she suggested taking him with me. Ah, I see. What can I get you? Something cold. Sure. I don't know why I'm getting so picky about this part, but you know. One. Three. One. Wait. No, it's not cold even if there is a place in there. This one. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Ox. All right, I think you'll like this one. Really? <laughs> so sweet of you. Thanks. So, Sela isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow and is having a meeting today. I'm just helping her by checking on some of the things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to the party we're throwing tomorrow. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that. Can't really say no to Stella. Maybe next time? If there's a next time at all. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. I, I want you to know that I want you to have a good time. Have fun, drink a couple of beers in our honor. I will. Uh, sorry. I will then. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? They're really big. There's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food, though. So, at the end of the party, she lets the staff take home whatever's left. She also buys toys for all the children of her staff members. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just... shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Many of the kids have even started calling her Auntie Ella. Stella always does her best to put up a tough girl facade, but she's very much in touch with her inner child. Christmas, Easter, Halloween, name a party and she most likely celebrates it big. Interesting. Do you like parties, Jill? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend, though. I just don't mind going to them. Ah, uh, I see. I only go to parties that Stella's attending, because otherwise, I'd just stand there without anything to say. That and... I'm not one to wear dresses, you know? You're not? I'm a tad too ripped. They don't look cute on me. Although, with all this healing I have to do, I won't be as fit for a while. They're too... um... Breezy, too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. But I bet you'd look good in a dress, Chill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. Last time I wore one, I remember wearing my arms were too thin or something like that. We all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's... hard to imagine. 
Oh, but she does have one. She just stresses a lot about her bus size. Really? She's not that small. I think I'm smaller than her, in fact. Actually, it's the opposite. The opposite kind of complex, I mean. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? Again, I've seen bigger chests than hers, to be honest. Although I guess comparisons are useless here. They rarely help with complexes. Well, she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean, I've seen her before and after she tucks them away, but... I guess I never cared enough to ask the specifics. That's also why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those... Um... Drills? They look a bit drilly, don't they? Sorry, that sounded bad. She styles her hair like that to help divert attention away from her chest. She seems affluent enough, why not go through a reduction surgery? Because she also kind of likes having that size? She takes her bus size after her mom, and Miss Carmine is quite proud of her chest. Puffing out your chest is a sign of confidence, and a bigger chest means more confidence to show. She says something along those lines a lot. Stella is quite the admiration for her mom, so I guess breast reduction would feel like betraying her? Huh. I'm making it sound like she's hiding J-cups or something like that. I guess in a taller or thicker person, her size would be normal. She's just a bit shorter or thinner than her mom. Than the mom, sorry. You get self-conscious about your uh, bus size, Jill? Not really. I've been more self-conscious about my height. Although it usually comes up whenever not being average height hinders me somehow. What about you? Yes, and... No? not my bus size, but rather that I look too manly sometimes. And I can't help but wonder if bigger boobs would help with that. You're fine. Don't worry. Thank you. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. Do you have something non-alcoholic? I do. Give me a sec. Here. Thanks. You're not one to drink that much alcohol, are you? It makes me feel sleepy, or at the very least, my le makes my legs go numb. It's an annoying feeling, to be honest. It makes me wonder what's so good about getting drunk. I mean, I'm not above it, but it's not exactly a pleasant feeling. You feel like you're sleepy even when you're not. Your legs go numb, everything starts sounding funnier than it really is. What's so good about not being able to control yourself? That's a good question, actually. Usually people like feeling numb because that numbness helps them forget their problems. Even if we don't talk about alcohol, there's a portion of people that can't afford food. Or who are suffering from some pain that only alleviates when drunk or high. It doesn't sound really logical on paper, but then again, humans are rarely, if ever, logical creatures. Despair and pain cloud your judgments and make you do stupid things sometimes. Yeah. I've seen that firsthand. This world has an ugly side nobody deserves to be a part of. Hmm. <clears throat> There's also a matter of addiction, you know. You start just liking the drink, but then you need more of it, and before you know it, you're hooked. Oh yeah, that too. So tell me, what kind of party are you guys throwing? Nothing fancy. It'll just be me, boss, Jill, and a couple of regulars. They'll bring food, we'll chat for a while, and that's it. Man, that sounds so good. At least better than the whole planning madness Stella's throwing right now. If you ever throw something like that again, you let me know, you hear? Sure. Hey, say? Yeah? What do you plan on doing now? I'm gonna check one last errand before going home. No, I mean... What do you plan on doing now with the White Knights disbanded and all? To be honest, I don't know. 
I never prepared a plan B because I figured if you can go with a plan B, why not just make it pl the plan A? I'm not the brightest person, so I never graduated from college or even high school. I could go for a position with the police, but it wouldn't be as thrilling. And I'm tired of blatant corruption. Sick of it. Oh. But I'm alive. Hmm? I learned something after that hell in Apollo Trust. Life is not something that you can just throw away easily. Pulling my way out of that place made me realize just how much I want to be alive. The body count left in the bank was ridiculous. I'm still here. I don't know what I'll do, but I'm alive. I'll figure it out sooner or later. That's nice to know. Well, I gotta go. Bye, Jill. Good luck with the party. Please come again. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh. Hi, Mr. Detective. Ugh. Hey there, girl. Please. Give me a strong drink, won't you? Alright. One, two, four. One, two, three. One, two. Here you go. Yes. <clears throat> It'll do. So what brought you here? Nothing special. I was just working on a case I happened to be in the area. What kind of work? Tracking someone? A gun for hire? What about the girl? Crimson something. I'm tracking that girl. Didn't you just get out of that job? I did, but the guy offered a huge amount of money and, well, I just, I couldn't refuse again. Well, it's your life, not mine. I wonder, though, there has to be more to that whole thing than just acting as a middleman to look for some murderer. Mm hmm. Say, how safe is this place? We're protected by the BTC property laws. The walls are soundproof. And I really couldn't give less of a shit about selling info to anyone. Okay then. Wait. I don't prove walls? Why? Did you see those vending machines outside? They're quite talkative, the bastards. It'd be annoying without those walls. Alright then. Have you heard of Lord Lance Lavender? Nope. He's some big name from Kanye... Ooh. He's some big name from Kanyevania. His blood apparently has some weird reaction to Glitch City's nanomachines. Once in contact with the air, it does nothing. But if you still f it, but but if still fresh and touching someone's blood, the nanomachines will initiate a reaction. Essentially, they'll just eat through the other person's body until there's nothing left. They're using him as a guinea pig to see what causes that reaction and if it could be used to fight nanomachine rejection. Uh-huh. Well, turns out the Crimson Rose is his daughter. She left years ago to earn her living here and he hasn't even- He hasn't seen her even once. Ever once, sorry. He could be lying, you know. Found it. I did my research. She really is his daughter. Why didn't you figure that out earlier? I had no clue who was making the contract, and tracking all the messages to the source would have been too costly. Knowing who the sender was made things easier. I see. Can I get you anything else? Hmm. What about a Cobalt Velvet? Okay. Cobalt Velvet for the Stone Cold... Stunner. One, two, three. Is this your love is a drug? Because it's a very fucking good bop. I don't think so. It sounds like something else. Here you are. Oh, you actually did it. Were you expecting me to mess up so you didn't have to pay? N no. So what made you accept the contract anyway? Keeping in mind all the risks you told me last time. 
mm, call me you wanted to see her again one last time, or at the very least, deliver her a message. You could have been lying. Yes, people lie, you made your point. Even then, I felt like I couldn't say no. I mean, I know what it's like not being able to find your daughter. But it's like to be apart from her, not knowing what she's doing, or even if she's alright. You do? I have a daughter. She's about your age. When she was a teen, we had a big fight and she ran away from home. At first, I just waited for her to show up. But then, I started getting worried and went out to find her. I couldn't find any trace of her. Nobody had seen her. Soon I was worried if something might have happened to her. I guess that's how my tracking skills and list of contacts began to grow. I finally found her. I can cover in some dumpster unconscious from starvation. Oh yeah. I just couldn't say no to his request of finding his daughter. But I don't expect you to understand. So. How's the search going? I'm very close to finding her. That girl's pretty good at covering her tracks. Compared to the her from before, the bank... Compared to the her from before, the bank incident, though, she seems slower or something. Either she's left her guard... She's let her guard down, or something else is happening. What will you do when you find her? I have this letter I'm supposed to deliver to her. I don't know what it says, and I don't want to find out. What if she tries to kill you? I might not look like it, but I can take care of myself, bartender. You don't stay so long in this business without picking up a couple of tricks. Yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, I better go back to work before her trail goes cold. Please come again. Are you done? Yeah. Okay then, I want you here tomorrow at 8 p.m. No working beforehand, the bar will be closed tomorrow. Come dressed in your absolute best. We're having a party after all. All right. Where's Jill, by the way? He stored all of our things in his home because of how close it was to the stores. So I told him to go home already and bring the stuff tomorrow. I see. Well, see you tomorrow, boss. Hold on, wait a bit. I'll go with you. Oh, sure. Thanks. I know this small party is with you. I love the boss so much. Oh, Merry make a Christmas, let us celebrate Santa's resurrection. Wow. Mega Christmas is about Santa's resurrection instead of Jesus. It's hilarious. As the mega Santa that saved Christmas from the Redmonds. What's going on? Okay. Well, that's about time, right? Uh, so. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, I really appreciate uh, whenever I have an audience. For one. Today, as you know, is obviously shorter than yesterday. Um, and that's how I'm going to kind of keep it. I, I noticed that I tend to do better on Tuesday evenings compared to, to Wednesday evenings. I don't really know what the best time to stream is. And sometimes that isn't true for a game like Valhalla, where there's currently nobody looking for it, because it's not, like, the most popular game right now. I think that's a real shame, because it's absolutely super cool. I love the aesthetic, and the art, and the story, and the music. I, You know I love that music. So, like, I'm doing my best to provide uh, the kind of content I would be looking for, because if I didn't buy Valhalla for one reason or another, shame on me, like, I would want to watch somebody play it, and I probably would want to hear their voices. Obviously, if those voices suck ass, then, you know, that's a different story. So, that's why I want to know, do I suck ass? But, um, generally speaking, I have a good time, and I hope you do too. So, uh, you know, actually, oh, wait, 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 uh, so I won't be streaming, uh, anytime soon because I'm going to be away in South Korea, but I will try to update on Twitter. So check out at Way of the Bishi on, on Twitter uh, to, to see when 
I might be able to get a stream in at a net cafe or something like that. Play it. Probably gonna play Apex Legends at that time. That'll be different. Um, and totally different from regular streaming time as well. So only if you wanna, you know? Um, and I think I might spend some time also trying to upload some more stuff to YouTube. So look out for that. The, the link is down below. So you can just go to my YouTube. And right now we already got Mega Man 11. I'm st I still haven't uploaded Kingdom Hearts. I'm, I know I'm being lame about that, but I also realized how lousy some of the audio was for that game. So, you know, I feel some kind of way about it. And uh, I haven't decided what game I want to do for original content for YouTube, but it'll be a surprise. It'll be a surprise. I guarantee it'll be some something that people what were not expecting. That's my hope. So yeah, uh, stay pretty, everyone, and uh, you know, have a good rest of the week. Bye.